to the Lord in prayer this morning. We want to pray for Sarah's son, John, who uh, has gone through an operation for cancer and going through treatments. And we just want to uphold Sarah and her family and John in our prayers today. And maybe you have a need. Maybe it's a relational need, a spiritual need. Maybe it's an area where you're afraid for your job or you're afraid for your health. And Lord, we just come to you this morning and we give all of our fears to you and all our insecurities and questions. We live in a world that's fearful. We live in a world that seems to be tearing itself apart. But Lord, we know that you have a plan for this world and that Jesus, you are going to be coming again for this, to this world. But Lord, in the meanwhile, as we wait for you, we see all this turmoil and this fear. We see sickness and disease. Lord, we pray for healing. We pray, Lord, that we would just gain a greater trust in you. And Father, that we would recognize and realize your presence in a much greater way, that you bring revival and renewal, refresh and restore and renew your people as we serve you and worship you, as churches start to open again, Lord, some of them slowly, some of them, Lord, like us, opening the, the week, uh, you know, a week later. But Lord, people are making their way back very slowly, very cautiously. And that's okay. But Lord, we pray that you give us, Lord, that confidence in you that we need and wisdom to know what it is and the right steps and the right things to do at this time. Lord, bring healing to John, Sarah's son, and be with Sarah and her family and John's family today. We pray for healing upon him, we ask in Jesus' name. And Lord, that you'd anoint this service with your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You may be seated. And it's wonderful to see you as people are just kind of finding their way and churches finding their way to know what to do and what is best. Thank you to our our uh, board, who uh, I have a picture of us all in face masks and, and in shields. I don't think I'll get, them, I'll get an opportunity to ever see them like that again in helping with the host team this morning in welcoming and greeting you. And thank you to Eric and Pete at the back who have been so faithful in bringing to us the streaming and working every week. And they have... They have uh, uh, it been cruel and unusual punishment where it's just me and them every Wednesday night as I'm just preaching to them and laying it down and giving it to them. So uh, pray for them, but thank, thank God for their sacrifices. And uh, for those of you online who have been so faithful in watching, and, and we have a lot of people that watch us online, and uh, we're so glad that you're with us this morning. So happy Father's Day. My message this morning is entitled Honeydew. How many husbands out there have a wife that has a honeydew list? Let's shake your Pringles or raise your hand. Oh, you brave men. You brave men. You know, some of <laughs> I'm not lifting my hand. She's right beside me. Well, we, we all know every guy has a honeydew list, and they, they all know about it. We kind of joke about it privately when we're by ourselves. And guys, isn't it true, though? Like, to be really honest here, in, in this honest moment, that that list is a bit of a pain, isn't it? Isn't that list a bit of a pain? I, I mean, it takes us out of our favorite place. Because guys have a favorite place. They have a favorite little secret spot they like to be in. And they can be there on the couch. They can be there in the garage. They can be there in, in the room down in the basement in, in their home. And, and that place is called the nothing place. And when we come home, man, we like to get in that nothing place. And, and that's where, oh man, that just enjoys us. And, and guys, your wife doesn't understand the nothing place. She doesn't have a nothing place. If you say to your wife, so what are you doing? She'll tell you, well, I was talking to our daughter, and then I was talking to our son, and then I did this, and then I was, and then I was thinking about this. And I was getting, and anyway, and she just doesn't have, and if you ask a guy, so what have you been doing? Nothing. <laughs> what's he doing he's out in the garage well what's he doing in the garage nothing <laughs> well we love that place and you know if you're out in your garage or if you're laying on the couch listening to music or if you're on your computer playing games or if you, and your wife comes along and she says to you she says so what are you doing and you say nothing uh, that's the wrong answer. 
Because the minute she hears that, now that drives her crazy, and out comes the honey-do list, right? Isn't that how it works? That's exactly, it's exactly how it works. And so we do, I mean, we make excuses. She, she might, well, I love the game Sim City. I don't know why. I just, I love that game. I, and, and I'm playing Sim City, and my wife is saying, what are you doing? Are you working on that computer? Yeah, kind of. The Sims need me. <laughs> You're doing nothing. You know, there's a whole list here that you need to be doing. Now, wives, have you ever had to ask your husband ten times to take out the, gar the garbage and it still isn't out? It's just there. Are there all those things that you know are just important and urgent and you need him to do and he's just not doing it? I mean, let, let's skip ahead to the, the, the picture. Well, first of all, there's this one. If my honey-do list looks annoying to you, wait till you see my honey-don't. Um, <clears throat> next one. Are, are, are you tired of every time you pull out the honey-do list, your husband kind of looks like that? You know, he's got that shield. <laughs> I've been wearing this today. It, it's all great until you start singing and you have to listen to yourself. But... Uh, <clears throat> It's like he's got this invisible shield. He just isn't listening. He's just kind of like, yeah, all right, all right, all right. Have you ever wished you had something that you could do about it? Well, ladies, you're just kind of looking at me like, where are you going with this, man? Well, you're not alone. For thousands of your years, women have dreamed of having their partner's behavior change just a little bit. You've probably figured out that repeating yourself over and over, nagging and nagging over and over, or using your soft, sweetie pie voice, oh, honey, or being a drill sergeant doesn't work, or doing nice things like making his favorite meal and trying to bribe him with nice stuff like that maybe works in the short term, but not in the long term. You, you kind of maybe noticed that kind of that kind of thing, and, 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 and it, it hasn't worked. Well, how many, how many wives would like to have a lucky day where they could get their husbands to do anything? Anything. Some wives are like, nah, that's too good to be true. I, I've, been reading, I've been reading this, uh, this book that uh, it's, it's called uh, Words That Change Minds. And the author of this book is a Canadian lady, and she has worked 30 years in behavioral, uh, behavioral sciences, working with corporations, teaching them how to build trust and credibility and influence in their employees and in their marketing place. And I think she had a, I think she had a husband at home that would go to his, go to his uh, nothing place a lot. And so she, she kind of thought, man, how can I help women with all this so that they can get their husbands to do anything? And so I'm almost through the book, and she, uh, <laughs> she starts talking about this app, and it is called The Husband Motivator. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and she said, every lady needs one of these apps, the Husband Motivator app, and you can get your husband to do just about anything you want him to do on that honeydew list. In fact, it covers a whole lot more than just, just lists and repairs along, uh, around the house, but it, it covers everything you can think of that you'd like him to do and, and how to get him to do it. And I read this in her book, and her book sounded kind of intelligent, and I thought, what, what kind of a silly thing is this? Is this just a gimmick? And so I downloaded the app on my phone and I pretended I was my wife. <laughs> and so I started answering the questions as if she would answer them. Does your husband like to procrastinate when you ask him to do a chore? <laughs> yes. <laughs> And I went down the list and then you get to the bottom and you, you push results. And I couldn't believe it. It's like she lives in our house. My wife must have been talking to her because she nailed it, right? Here's what your husband is like. Here's what motivates him. Here's what you need to say. Here's how you need to do it. And this will get him working. I thought, that's a dangerous app. Well, I got to tell the ladies in the church because it'll make them so much more happier but I might get fired when their husbands get tired of doing all those chores.
But that's what we're here for, isn't it? We're here to help each other. Husbands are here to help wives, but wives are here to help husbands, to be the best husband they can be. Wouldn't you agree, ladies? That's your job. And this this little app, it works on husbands, it works on wives, it works on kids and parents and bosses, and anybody you can imagine. Because, you you see, what we're here for is we're here to help each other be the best parent we can be, the best husband we can be, the best wife we can be. And if if you're if you find yourself, well, I'm I'm not married, this this message isn't for me. Well, you know what? You have people and you're in relationship with, with people, and they are put in relationship to help you to be the best you can be, and you need to be the best you can be in serving Jesus. And that's my message this morning, really, is that husbands and wives on this Father's Day, husbands and wives work and help each other to be the best that they can be. But I want to talk to wives. And, and, and I want to talk to the wives about being the best helper to your husband that you can be, and specifically helping him answer two of what I believe are the most important questions in life that every person needs to, needs to be able to answer. Two of the most important questions. So we've got to go all the way back to the very beginning when God first created wives. You know God created wives. It wasn't Adam didn't create a wife. God created a wife. Let's look into this. Genesis chapter 2, verses 18 to, to 14. Verse 18, it says, For the Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. See, for the first couple of chapters in Genesis, everything God had made, God looked at, and everything that was created, God said, It is good. And, and, and then he, he looks, and there's Adam... And Adam's in his nothing box. He's hanging out. And he's just laying on the couch. And God looks at Adam. He goes, you know what? This isn't good. He needs somebody to motivate him. It's not good for Adam to be alone. I will make him a helper suitable for him. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep, and while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. The man said, This is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. And so let's look at those two very important questions that a wife helps her husband answer. And by the way, parents have to help their children answer this, and why, uh, husbands help their wives answer this as well. As we work together in relationship, you have to have these questions answered, or believe me, you're going to have trouble. You're going to be aimless. You're going to wander and not know what you're doing. You're going to be unsatisfied. You will not be successful. You will fall into depression. You will fall into hopelessness, and you will fall into nihilism and despair if you don't have these questions answered. And that's where a lot of marriages are today, aren't they? Because they haven't answered these questions. And the first thing that a wife can do for her husband is to help him find his why. The question why. God created the heavens and the earth but found that it was not good that man did not have somebody there to help him. Man needed a mate, a partner, who would help each other find the important things that we need in life to make life purposeful and fulfilled and happy. That's why God gave Adam and Eve and brought them together. When the Bible talks about the helper, the helpmate, He is not talking about someone, sir, who will wash your clothes, do your cooking, and vacuum your house. He did not make you a maid. He made you a helper. And Adam saw Eve not as somebody who was under him, but as somebody who was to be an equal partner with him in life. And so when he looks at her, he says, she is flesh of my flesh, and she is bone of my bone. 
And she is here to walk along with me, beside me, to be my partner and to help each other together. They discover and help one another to become the best they can be, the best man, the best woman, the best husband, the best father, the best grandparent. That's why God brings us into relationships with wives and husbands and with other people. The word, the question why, is a foundational question of life. If a person cannot answer why, that question is so important that they will not be successful or happy or satisfied. God saw that Adam was missing so much in his life that without Eve, he couldn't find the fullness of his why. And that's why God said that it was not good for Adam to be alone. Adam needed someone in which to reach out and touch and love and cherish and make the most loving, wonderful thing in his whole life. And that would give him meaning and why. That's why God gave you your wife. Knowing your why identifies your values. That's what why, answering that question why. It identifies your core values and core algorithms in your operating system that makes you the person who you are. Eve would not be so important to the answer of that question, why, if God didn't make her for the man. God made Eve to help the man, to walk with the man, to answer that question. And that that woman would become so important to that man that he would leave his father and mother and he would cling to, he would hang on to her because of his need for her. Because she would help him answer the why. Husbands and wives partner to, 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 together to discover their why. And, 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 and the why are, are those values, those core values. And folks, to be, to be truly honest, we need, to, we need to discover them together before we get married. Otherwise, you have a very bad foundation to build a relationship on. And that's why many times, many people, they rush into marriage and they haven't figured out what their values even are. And they wonder why are things so bad? Why is this not working? So if you are married today, maybe there are some of those issues you need to iron out. You need to have a long, hard talk with your husband and wife and say, what are the core values that we have in this marriage relationship? And if you're not married today and you haven't figured out your values, your core values, you don't know what they are, then you are lucky because you have time to figure those out before you drag somebody with you into a place where you don't know where you're going. Get what I'm saying? And that works for us, the young ones and the old ones as well. No matter, this is not an age thing. This is a where are you at thing in your values and your life and your living and serving God. Why is so important. One of the greatest experiences I have had as a parent, and they've all been great. I loved it when our kids were just little babies. Sometimes I see my own grandchildren, I think, oh, man, I I remember when my son was that old. (laughs) And I think, well, sometimes it would be just nice to be getting a time machine, go back there just for a day, just for a day. Because we we loved our children, but one of the greatest experiences was when they went out on their own. They went out on their own. They made relationships. They got married. They started their own families. They're living with their own families. And and when they left our house, they did not leave empty-handed. They took some of my tools. They (laughs) took some kitchen stuff. They took a bit of furniture. But more important than that, they took the faith that we had communicated to them. And they took the values that we had brought them up with. And they took that faith and they took that values and they began to express that within their own home and their own family and their own lives. And they they began to do it their way and to, to form it and watching them form their own lives and families, taking what we gave them and then adding to it. It's the greatest thing that a parent can experience, let me tell you. It's the greatest thing. Jesus, you see, he models this. He models a strong why. 
Jesus left heaven and became a human. You ask, why would somebody leave heaven? Why would God leave heaven and become a human? And Jesus understood why. He said in Luke chapter 19, verse 10, when he was asked that question, he says, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. That's his why. And did he ever waver from that why? No, that was his value. He loved the world. He loved you. And why did you come here, Jesus? To seek and to save the lost. In another place in Mark, uh, Matthew chapter 20, verse 28, he said, just as the Son of Man did not come to, serve, to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus came because he had a strong why. He knew exactly who he was and why he was here. You see, you, can, you need to have a why too. Husbands and wives need to walk together in finding their why, in finding what their values are. Together, they connect together in a relationship with Jesus. I, I would suggest that that's the best place to start. I would suggest. Is, is starting to... Make Jesus your number one in the center of your own life. And if he's the center of your life, sir, and your life, ma'am, he will be the center of your home. And answering that first question, why am I here? To serve and to please God. And that will help you as a basis for all of the other core values that you need in order to be successful and happy in your life and in your home. We start with Jesus. We all need to have the answer to the question, why? And then the second question follows very closely on the heels of why, and that is the question, what? A wife helps her husband to find out what? Now, this summer, I thought, I'm going to get ahead of my wife. I'm going to completely blow her away. I am going to surprise her. I am going to, get, I am going to start on her honey-do list, and I'm going to get ahead of that. That way I can spend more time when the weather is really nice in my, in my nothing space. And I can always say, but look at honey what I've done. Anyway, um, I thought, I'm going to start. Right, I'm going to go out. She wants the deck to be enlarged. I'm going to start making the deck larger. And so I'm out in the backyard and I got my measuring tape and I'm measuring things up. And she comes out, she goes, what are you doing? I said, well, you wanted the deck to be larger. I'm going to start that project right now. She says, no, I don't want that done right now. Yeah, we need to do that. But that, no, there's that stinky old carpet in our bedroom that needs to be changed. And you need to put down the hardwood flooring. That's what we need to do. And so, you know, I... This, I, my wife and I, we work together. We don't kill each other. <laughs> she puts down the hardwood. We buy the hardwood. She puts it down. I nail it in. And we get her done. And, and we have a nice new hardwood bedroom floor. But, but see, what, what I needed her to do was I needed her to help me with my priorities. And that's what what does. It tells us the priorities. What's, what's priority? What's first? What's second? What's third? What's fourth? Those are the priorities. And, and we have priorities, and because we understand our why, it helps in our priorities on what we're going to do, where we're going to spend our time, what we're going to spend our money and energy doing. In any relationship, you spend most of your time after you're married in, the, in your what's. Uh, let, let's put up that little chart. I put a little chart on, on, this works for my wife and I, it may not work for you, but it works for my, my wife and I. On this side here, we have our values. Those are our whys. Those things we talked about before we were married. Before we were married, we talked about this side, the why side. And, and, and these are some of our values. Not all of them, but there's some of them. To love and serve God. Communication and understanding. And then on this side, we talk about these after we're married, and we're always adjusting these on the, on, on the what side. In order to have alignment. If, if we're always adjusting these, we've got a problem. We don't understand our values. We don't know why, and we don't know who we are. But once we've got that, and I know we've got similar values, then we begin to work on the priorities. And this is hard. This is where we argue the most. And we don't argue a lot, but when we do have one, it's usually because it's over the what. It's over what. And so our values and our, our what's, what we do, 
what our priorities are. They have to have alignment. And we have to have alignment with each other. So we value loving and serving God. That meant we needed to have personal devotions. And then we needed to have family devotions. And kids came along. We had to change that. We couldn't sit there and read two, two chapters of the King James Bible to our two-year-olds, but we could play Bible games with them. And, and, and then we, we needed to be involved in our church because we wanted to love and serve God. We needed to be involved with God's people. We needed to be involved in our church, and we needed to serve other people through our church. It was a no-brainer. But how and what we did, sometimes, you know, that took a little bit of, a little bit of finessing, a little bit of talking, a little, a little bit of discussion. And then communication, that was another big one. There's people that have a lot of communication in their marriage. They're always yelling at each other. That wasn't what our what was going to be. So we reserved weekly times for uninterrupted communication. We still do that. But was it hard when the kids were young? Oh, yeah, it was almost impossible. We eat meals as a family together, uninterrupted by TV and telephones and, and an answering machine. Remember answering machines? Put in a little cassette tape. They were little wee things, and they had, okay, never mind. Now we have cell phones. It's really funny because that value stays the same in our home, and our what has not changed. And so when my 32-year-old police officer son comes and plops himself down at the table to eat and pulls out his cell phone, his mother takes it away. Because he is transgressing a value. And understanding, we listen to each other, an un uninterrupted, non judgmental attitude. Boy, that is really hard when I'm right. It's hard to do when I'm right. We listen to our children without jumping to conclusions. We create a safe home where mistakes can be made and acceptance felt. That's understanding. And see, we are always discussing and always changing and always trying to get alignment in our relationships with our what. But if we don't, if we don't know what they are, we are in trouble. Because when they get out of the line, it's like, you know, your car, when your car is out of the line, that's a bumpy drive, isn't it? You bring things into alignment and things go smoothly. I would say this. If in your marriage, if you have a place of chaos... It is, always a, it, it is always a matter of alignment between your values and your, your priorities, between your, your what's and between your why's. That's where it's going to come. If you're in, you don't have to be married for this to happen. Because many single people, they have just as chaotic places in their lives. And it's the same problem. It's a, it's, it's a uh, misalignment between the values and between the priorities. So God wants us to bring us, God wants us to understand not only our values, but our priorities and work that together. Eve needs to help Adam do that because Adam likes to go into his little box of nothing and hang out there. So we work together. We work together. And as we do that, we look to Jesus as our model and we realize that this was where Jesus faced the most conflict between himself and the Father and between himself and the rest of the world. When the rest of the world came to argue against Jesus, as they will in your family, and they'll argue against you, the values of the world will argue against your values, won't they? The kids of school will argue against your kids. Why are you going to church? Why are you doing that? By the way, when our kids didn't want to go to church, we didn't argue about the what section. We brought them right to the why. Because this family loves and serves God. And God is first. That's why. Not what? Because we have to. And the pastor's going to be upset if he doesn't see us again this week. That's not a reason to go to church. But to serve and love God and to worship him is. So Jesus had conflict with the world because of his what? And so Jesus had to, had to say to the world and his disciples, John chapter 6, verse 38, For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him that sent me. That was Jesus' what? I'm not here to follow popular opinion. I'm here to follow his advice and his opinion. I'm here to do his will. It doesn't matter if the world rejects me. I'm here to do his will. Disciples, it doesn't matter if you don't agree with me. I'm here to do his will. And as a family, if you have figured out your why and your what, then you 
we'll be able to look at the world and all the pressures that come in and say, you know what, it doesn't matter what you say. We know why we're here and we know what we're doing. Was it easy for Jesus? The hardest moments of his life were spent in this what zone. The hardest moments of your life will be spent, of your family's life will be spent in this what zone. There are times when Jesus, in doing the Father's will, in doing what he was supposed to do, brought him to tears and brought him at one time to the place of his greatest trial and temptation, to sweating big drops of blood. And I tell you, if you're in a family and if you have children and you love your husband and you love your wife and you love your kids, sometimes doing the right thing is going to hurt and make you cry. Because it's not easy. And so we see Jesus at his most difficult time in the Garden of Gethsemane, just before his arrest in the cross, struggling with the what? Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. You hear the anguish in that as he sweats drops of blood. Yet not my will, but yours. Jesus never never strayed from his what? I just want to encourage you this morning as we close this service to seek alignment with the Father, to seek alignment with your spouse, to seek alignment to pray with one another more often. And maybe there's stuff and there's bumps in the road and you need to sit down with your spouse and say, Let's figure out where we're out of line. Let's figure out where we are out of alignment between our what, our priorities, and our values. And where we're out of alignment with one another. And let's get back on the same why and the same what, even if it's difficult. It's worth it. If you're single, and you are dealing with some stress in your life and some chaos, ask, where is my life out of alignment with my values? And bring those things back into alignment. Maybe you're listening to some voice out there where you're supposed to be listening to the voice up there. And that alignment is matching, and it's causing chaos in your life. You can change that by bringing things into alignment. Let's stand together as we close in prayer. Lord, I want to pray right now for our homes. I want to pray for the homes that are watching us today and couples that are here this morning. Thank you. Our church is built on strong marriages and strong couples that love you, but none of us are perfect from the pastor to the pew. None of us are perfect. We all need you. Lord, there's things in our families right now that make us make us cry and make our gut wrench. There's things, Lord, that, that we have gone through in our families, Lord, with a, with a child, and, and we have held to the things that we know that are your will, and Lord, it's been really hard to walk through that. Father, we pray that you would, you would be with homes today and families that are, are fighting the good fight, and they know they know their why and they know their what and they're, they're doing what they know is right and is of God. And Lord, that you just keep them on that path and keep them there and walking together, husband and wife, supporting one another. Lord, for those areas that are in a, unaligned, where there's chaos, Lord, I pray for those who are single here and they, they are on their own in many ways, but Lord, you are with them. And in those areas of turmoil and chaos in their lives, that you would bring an alignment, O oh God. Help them to see where they are out of line with their values and that their priorities need to be brought into line with those things, with what you want for their lives. Lord, for husbands and wives that are struggling in areas, help them to communicate, help them to help them to identify those areas that are of value and those, those areas of priority that are out of sync to bring them in line 
so that you may be glorified. And if there's anybody here today that needs you, and maybe today you're far away from God, but the place to start is to start on a solid rock, on a solid foundation, and that is Jesus, and ask him to come into your life. Say, Lord, help me. Help me to know why and help me to know what to do. And I give my life to you. And that's our starting point, Lord. I understand you're not looking for perfection in me, but you're looking for my heart to be given to you and surrendered. And so I do that, Lord, today. Come into my heart, Lord. Forgive me and help me. Help me, Lord, to answer the whys and the whats in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We're going to let you dismiss from the back first. It's kind of like a, a wedding, only we let the front go first. We're going to let the back people go first, and that's the exit door. But if you didn't get Pringles, you can go out that door, grab some Pringles, and then go to the exit door. And if, if you came by elevator, you can go back by elevator. That's okay. Now, don't you all go for the elevator. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for joining us online. See you on Wednesday night.